Okay, so this class will be about the enlightenment, okay? And the principal thinkers and what did they say or did they propose, okay? The first thing, and I will say that uh, I am uh, using information from another video in YouTube. Um, not the information, because I have the information, but the, the structure. This structure is, you can find this in another video. What is the idea? I won't say what is enlightenment because you will read a text that answers that question. What is enlightenment? Okay? And you will write about it. I will say that the context for the enlightenment is the combat okay, against absolute monarchy. Okay? The absolute monarchy, and if you want to take notes, I will appreciate it. Okay? The conflict during the enlightenment, okay, of the thing that they tried to solve, the problem that they found was the absolute monarchy, okay? And here is the explanation. We have an absolute monarch, okay? We have a king. I feel like you can see. Can you move, move a little bit? Thank you. Uh, the absolute monarch, okay, the king, was ruling a lot of people, no? A lot of people. But the question is, what is the source of power? Why was the king the king? Why? That is exactly one of the things, that reaction of, mm, I don't know. That is exactly one of the, of the things that move us to be enlightened, okay? To use the ideas of the enlightenment, okay? Because if we don't know how to explain what is the source of power of the king? We have a serious problem, a very serious problem. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying you, I mean the society that can explain why the king is a king, basically is accepting the violation of rights, the abuses of power, because I don't know what, okay? That is the problem. And that is why these thinkers say, explain me why. And if you don't find a, 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 a logical explanation, so we have to change the system, because it's not logical, okay? The Enlightenment took ideas from the scientific revolution, the scientific method. If with the science that Copernicus, Galileo Galilei, Isaac Newton and others, if that science can explain the nature, okay? Can explain the sky, the universe, the earth, my body, whatever that is in nature, why can we use the same method, the science, to explain the society, the relations that we have? And additionally, and very important, why don't we use that to explain why that man is abusing the power? If we can use the science for this, maybe we can use that for this too, okay? So, the scientific revolution is about science, sounds obvious, okay? And the enlightenment, is about politics, okay? Enlightenment, politics. That's it, okay? In other words, the organization of the state and the reasons for having the power, okay? Who has the power and why, good? And if not, uh, uh, or I mean, if we disagree with that, so we try to change, okay? We try to change that society. What is the source of power of the king? That was the, that face. It was the same face of the people before the marriage. You mean how he got the power? The divine right. Yeah. yeah. I am the king because my father was the king and my grandfather was the king and so on. and my son will be the king. Okay, that is basically the reason. And why you are the king? Because one day God took that decision. Okay, it's like God's will. Uh, it's not good enough as an explanation, okay? So, the divine right was something that was not accepted by these philosophers, okay? The divine right is not the explanation that we need, okay? This first man, Thomas Hobbes, from England, is very curious because he is included in the list of enlightenment uh, philosophers but curiously, he was in favor of absolute monarchy. 
he supported the absolute monarchy. So the question is, if he supported absolutism, why is he included in the space? It's a very good question. <laughs> this is this is this is an opinion. This is one opinion. And you listen what is an opinion. Okay? Normally the teachers can repeat that he is enlightened. Okay? He is part of the line. But normally teachers don't say that that is a contradiction. Why is he included in the list of enlightened people? I will tell you why. Okay? This is this is a deduction, okay? But it's obvious. Hobbes is in this list because even if he supported the absolute monarchy, he used the reason, he used arguments, and he explained the reasons for having a king. Okay? In other words, he tried to use in a particular way, maybe not the best, but he tried to use in a particular way the scientific method, okay, a rational way to explain this man, why we need this man. Okay? And he said something. Basically, that humans are selfish and evil, okay? Humans are bad, okay, by nature. That is part of our nature, okay? He said that. You have more philosophers that say no, that is not true, that is not true, that is different. I can't imagine a little baby of one year, um, okay, that is one year old as a bad person, the baby is innocent, okay, but he considered that by nature we are bad, okay, so if he discovered that, maybe what we need is something like a monster, okay, that he recognizes that can be terrible, but it's better than the chaos created by these people. If you don't have that monster controlling us, okay, if we don't have that monster controlling us, the society will be chaos, destruction, etc. No? That monster is the Leviathan. The Leviathan is a monster that is um, a biblical monster, okay? This monster was in the Bible, okay? And he used that expression, he used that uh, figure to say that this is something absolutely necessary. What is the Leviathan in other words? The state. We need the state, okay? We need the army, we need the police, we need the president, we need, in this case, the king. Okay? Someone with that power, that the power of the state is divided, okay? The power of the, of the state is divided in two basic things. The violence, okay? The soldier can, can kill, the police can kill, can hit you, okay? And additionally, the law, okay? The state creates the laws, okay? The Leviathan can control you, okay? And it's a huge monster. If you imagine the state, you can imagine all the power that the state has, and you say, oh, it's enormous, okay? Yes, it's so big, okay? But it's needed, okay? He will say something like, I prefer this terrible monster to the selfish and evil people that can do whatever they want, okay? Clear? The first philosopher is clear? So in this case, for, for uh, Hobbes, or when you explain Hobbes, the most important thing is not the solution, is the problem that he identifies. Basically, the diagnosis of the society. He, he finds the society in those terms, and he defines the society in those terms. He, selfish and evil. We have now the second thinker, English too, contemporary of Thomas Hobbes but with another very different idea, okay? Locke considered that we born with three basic rights, okay? We have, uh, is that, yes, liberty, liberty, uh, life, 
and property. When we include, this is an opinion. I will say, I will always say what is an opinion, okay? Because you can identify the level of opinions. When you read that life and liberty are the basic rights, but additionally there is a third right, the basic right that we have, that is property, then you understand that this idea is a liberal idea because include capitalism, okay? Here, capitalism is included because you have your private property, okay? There? Good, perfect. So we need the state, okay, to defend us, okay? We need the state to protect us, to protect these basic rights. If you see, what we have here is that these two thinkers, okay, these two thinkers, from different points, okay, they start in different points, but they get to the same conclusion. We need the state, because the people is bad, or because we have rights and we need to be protected. Anyways, we need the state, okay, and they are um, maybe the first serious philosophers to create a theory that explains how to organize the state. Okay? Clear? The modern state. Hobbes and Locke. Where are they from? From Britain. Okay? They are British. Montesquieu. What is the point of Montesquieu? Montesquieu is important because, okay, we have the state. Because of this or because of that, but we can we have the state. But how do we prevent that the king, okay, or the governor? Because Locke considered absolutely important that the governor will be the governor only because the people accept that power. Okay. Hobbes, uh, he don't care about. It, okay, the king will be the king because he's the heir and that's it. Okay. But in this case, Locke considers that the people has to accept, the people have to accept the power of the king. And if the people don't accept it, so he won't be the king, okay? Because the king is the king because of the people, okay? Montesquieu says, okay, because of this or because of that, but we have a government. But how can we guarantee that that man won't abuse the power? How can we how can we guarantee that he won't violate the rights of people? How? He said dividing the dividing the state in three branches. Okay? So this man is absolutely important, guys, absolutely important, because he was the the person that created the theory of the three branches. Okay? So, legislative, executive, and judicial. He created this. Now you can imagine how important is this man in history, no? He is Baron de Montesquieu, that is the name. So, where is he from? Uh, France. France, yes. Here, I will advance this. These, these three thinkers, Montesquieu, Rousseau, and Voltaire, they are from France, okay? So, you can see here that we are talking about politics, very deep and dense politics, okay? How to organize the state. Now, Rousseau says, if we have all this, basically it is because we have freedom, okay? And the freedom will be absolutely important. Absolutely important, okay? Only the free people can take this type of decisions, okay? If you are not free, you can't take these decisions, okay? So if we have a society composed by free individuals, that's great. And if these free individuals go to the king and the king comes to the people and they pact, okay? They agree with this and that rule with this and that decision, okay? So we have something that Hobbes said before, but Rousseau um, 
organized as a huge theory. It's the social contract, okay? So you have something like a paper with a social contract, okay? The social contract of Rousseau, okay? <clears throat> is basically the way he explains the connection, okay? The official connection between the government and the people, okay? And following the idea of law, that is only possible if the people accept. If people don't accept, the king won't be the king any longer. Okay? Clear? That sounds obvious now, but if you remember that we are talking about absolute monarchies and the violence of the kings and the connections with the church and the corruption of these institutions, you understand that these people was absolutely revolutionary. Okay? They changed absolutely everything. And nowadays our societies are based on these philosophers. Okay? Our societies are our societies because of these people. Finally, Voltaire. Voltaire is a man that explains basically the separation between the government and religion, okay? The government is an instinct of the government and the state are there to control the people to ex exercise the power, to exercise the laws, etc. The religion is for spiritual okay, uh, topics, for, for other businesses. Okay? They are not connected to the principal idea of the government. And he considers okay, that we have a problem if we mix religion and government, okay? Yeah. Why? Because maybe you can persecute the people, okay? If the people believe in another religion, okay? So the big word of Voltaire, the big, big concept of Voltaire is a beautiful concept that he created, well, that he developed, is tolerance, okay? The tolerance right because I have no space and I don't want to <laughs> write it, but please write this. Voltaire is tolerance, okay? You have to tolerate the people from different beliefs, okay? If I am Muslim, if I am Christian, if I am whatever, okay? I deserve the same respect, okay? And that is only possible if the institution that is there to protect my rights don't take a position, okay? But if the king or the government is Catholic or Muslim or whatever, probably could persecute the rest, okay? So to solve that problem, okay, to prevent that situation, just guarantee that the state won't take a position. We'll be separated, government and religion, clear? We have countries that have religion and power mixed. But anyways, those countries accept and respect and tolerate the different religions. Here in Qatar, for example, that is a Muslim country, the people that is Christian can go to the church, can say freely that they are Christians, okay? Because this concept evolved, okay? And touched every single society. Good? But we try. Because still there are a lot of people that reject the others because of the beliefs, okay? If you see all this, then you understand why we have two enormous, huge events in history that were inspired in these philosophers. Those two huge events are, first, in 1776, and the second, in 1789, the American Revolution, Okay, or the independence of the United States. 
and in 1789, the French Revolution. The French Revolution that for many historians, okay, is the most important event in history. I don't know if I agree with that, because the world wars were absolutely important and the Industrial Revolution was absolutely important too. We don't know which was the most important event. But what we can say is that because of this, the world is organized in the way that is organized. Because of the French Revolution appeared the national states, nationalism, industrialization, uh, modern ideas, the spread of ideas, a lot of things happened because of this. Okay? So the French Revolution is very important. And it's only possible if you understand this.